seeking certainty costs you time and money? Let's think about how much. That's this week on the Badass Agile Podcast. Greetings, team. Welcome to the Badass Agile Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Williams. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. So great to see you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. This is a topic I like to talk about. It's not new, but it's perhaps the most pervasive cause of failure and disappointment in teams of every kind. And it's also the toughest problem to crack. Now, before we get there, let's take a moment to remember why we're here. To create an elite tribe of leaders who truly serve their clients and communities by doing what matters and what works, relentlessly chasing value and excellence like a badass. There are so many resources out there about what you need to do to be agile, but we're focused on who you need to become in order to lead teams. So let's hammer down those fundamentals to create a truly unique and powerful force in this industry. And remember, if this helps you, just tell your friends. Seeking certainty means placing a higher value on consensus or evidence or safety before acting. Now, acting means doing things like building, releasing, committing, moving forward. Now, no one is immune to this problem. It's everywhere. You see, we seek as human beings to avoid mistakes or conflict. And there's nothing wrong with that, except for the fact that if you think about it, it's actually impossible to avoid mistakes. And in fact, the more pressure you put on yourself to get it right, believe me, I know this as a performer, public speaker, podcaster, if it's important to you to not make mistakes, you're probably going to make more of them you'll also make the experience more stressful, less fun. The master skill we should be focusing on here is not perfection, and I think we all know that inherently. But instead, the courage to deal with the fallout of being wrong, of uttering unpopular opinion, of going against the grain, or making a mistake. Because without this courage, two really important things get taken away from you. Number one, your speed to market. And number two, having the sheen and polish and respect of being a decisive leader. So for this very reason, courage is hard to get. If this were easy, everyone would be doing it. But here are some things that might help you give yourself and others more of the courage that's required to overcome your need to seek certainty. Number one, remember, courage is a muscle. So it's not going to grow without use and challenge, without crisis and pain. Number two, challenge yourself to lean into your fear zone every day by having difficult conversations and inspiring others to do the same. It's as simple as that. The only way to have more courage is to have more courage. It's something you gain from experience. It's something that you get by doing. So until you make the decision, until you decide that you're going to use this every day, that you're going to do the things that scare you, that you're going to say the things that are hard to say, that you're going to speak truth to people that are hard to speak truth to, nothing will change for you. Now, in my experience, when we deal with this problem, most people don't know that they suffer from it. This tends to feel like the way that we've always done things. So if you're serving clients, if you're a consultant, maybe you're joining a new team, Be prepared. This is not an easy thing to convince other people to do, but the cost of not changing is exceptionally high. And I can tell you again from experience that seeking certainty and safety is the primary reason why agile projects fail. If we say we don't get good executive support, it's because we have failed to gain it. If we feel that leadership or management is not properly engaged, it's because we were afraid to ask for it. If it's because we don't feel that we're moving fast enough, it's because we fail to move quickly and decisively towards producing, doing, showing people our finished product, putting finished work into customers' hands. So as an agile leader, you're going to encounter people who are simply not trained in 
and maybe even don't know they need to be trained in, having the courage to leap. So here are some things that might help you. Number one, sometimes you just have to let teams fail. The only way to see or understand the cost of clinging to certainty is to cling to it and see what happens. And what happens is projects start to run late, people start to blame each other for failures, things aren't moving, they're going in infinite loops, we're not delivering on our promises. People start asking questions like, why isn't this moving? What's holding you back? Sometimes you have to fall flat on your face so that you can even get to a point of introspection, a point of awareness, a point of realization that allows you to say, this isn't working and something has to change. See, here's the thing. If you try to convince people to move them, to influence them, to change their minds before they're ready, you will encounter resistance. A lot of times we think that resistance to agility is something that we experience when in fact it's something we help create because we represent change. Agile represents a different way of doing things. And as such, we have to appreciate it can be scary. It can be threatening to people. So sometimes, why push too hard? Why not let them go a sprint or two or sometimes even longer? And when they experience that doing things the way they've always done them helps them come up short, you will save time and energy. I know it seems counterintuitive. If we let them fail, aren't we wasting time? Not exactly. If you try to push people into change before they want it, you're actually exerting energy that doesn't go anywhere. The other benefit of letting teams fail is that you get to see the characters and the patterns and the unique individual expressions of the team and all the people in it. Now, if you have a team that seems ready to leap as they start to progress, they may get scared that the things they say, the things they do are too bold and too ambitious and they won't have the support of the executive team. The best thing you can do that's really badass, by the way, is to offer to take care of that for them. Just say, why don't you let me worry about that? See, that's standing between the team and danger and they respect you for it, but they will also learn through example what courage in action looks like. See, all teaching and all coaching is a balance of telling and doing. And sometimes you just have to get in there and show them what a badass leader looks like. Another thing that can help is to create questions like, what if there was no dot, dot, dot? Or what if you had everything you needed? These are like scenarios that they can respond to, that they can imagine. What would you do if you didn't have this limitation, if this wasn't so scary, if this wasn't so foreign? Because at least it gets them thinking about sometimes we don't always have to face the terror head on. Sometimes we can simply move around it. And that can open up their creativity, their ability to solution, and the mindset and habit of working around your blockers rather than simply sitting there and letting them block you infinitely. That can really speed things up. Another thing you can do is inventory their beliefs about going now. So if people aren't moving, if you can tell that they're waiting for more certainty and safety and they're driving in loops and they're not getting anywhere, just ask them, what is it that we believe, believe will happen, especially, if we just go, if we go in the absence of permission, if we go in the absence of complete and perfect knowledge. And sometimes when people experience those beliefs, when they witness them and see them firsthand, it can really change their perception. It puts into cold, plain light the fact that maybe, just maybe, they're avoiding moving because of something that they fear, something that they believe will happen. And finally, you can ask the question, what else might work? So again, moving around the fear, moving around the block and trying something different. But also sometimes it's great to ask, why not? What's the worst that could happen if we move forward? Also known as, yeah, I get that this is scary. I get that this is different. I get that we're not comfortable here. But the way to build the courage muscle, of course, is to simply do it anyway. It's these skills and these beliefs that will really help your team grow and perform. And it's okay if they don't have it when you first meet them. In almost every case, it has to be grown, it has to be flexed, and it has to be developed. But it almost always starts with you. It requires that you become the change that you want to see in your client, team, or organization.
Friends, thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this one. You can reach out at badassagile.com. You can find me on Twitter at badass underscore agile. And don't forget to check out the Facebook Badass Agile Listener Lounge and check us out on LinkedIn. I appreciate you listening once again. Take care. Look forward to seeing you next time. And until then, stay badass. Badass.